kind of enjoy and not not kind of know the the kind of the just how crazy stuff was. But yeah, Richie played a key key um, testimony, and, that, and look that in, that impacted him to I mean till this day, man. Of he course. hasn't he hasn't been the same. Yeah, I, I actually did. I got COVID when this trial was going on, so it was a week where I couldn't bring anyone in. This was back in November 2021. Yes. So episode 75, I had to do a solo episode, and I did it on this right after the verdict. And, you know, the case, obviously, it came out, in my opinion, legally correct. Like, he was within his rights to do that. It felt like a situation, though, and I and I still feel the same exact way as I did back then. I was like, no one really won here. You had a 17-year-old no. kid who definitely wasn't smart enough to know that he wasn't breaking the law, taking a rifle like that across state lines. lines, right? He was being a fucking idiot, trying to be a hero, putting himself in a situation where he might have to use the weapon and kill people. He also killed people like the guy he killed was like not a good dude. Still killed a dude. Still killed him. But also the guy was attacking him. And he was at that point within his rights to use self-defense. But again, we talked about the politics earlier. We either had people saying, throw this kid in prison for 60 years for stupidly going to an event and then technically using his rights to do exactly what he did. So it's not it's not murder in that case. And then you had the other side like, he's a goddamn hero. And it's like, dude, that's, that's no. so cringe. It's all of it is so fucking cringe. Like, I'm, I'm glad that someone wasn't found guilty of something that they shouldn't have been found guilty of. Don't make them a hero. Move on with life. Well, how hard is I, this? I view it like you, but there's no, there's no winners in this, uh, you know, in this story. And, um, Richie had a key, key testimony because he was the one where, uh, and, um, where uh, I don't know if you could just type it really quick. Bro. Oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have Richie there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Richie does the. Uh, oh, where, I remember. This yeah, yeah. Where, where, where he he talked, and then that's a, my that's my colleague uh, Shelby down there. She did the rights with us with, with us too. Oh, and that's us right there, uh, Julia. That's, that's our, our our famous like riot reporter picture. <laughs> <laughs> right behind us is the uh, the Portland uh, Federal uh, Courthouse. There we have Rich uh, Shelby in the middle as a female. What's up, comrades? So yeah. So Richie, Richie had a key one. I forget exactly the, the words or the sentence, but it was like where the guy charged at Rittenhouse a uh, gun, and yeah. then um, obviously, guys, we all know what happened. Uh, you know, Rittenhouse is found not guilty. It's an explosion uh, on 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 the media. The reason why Julian, I wanted to bring this particular case. Obviously, we're, we were there. It's tied to the riots, but um, for me personally, bro, there was a huge media lesson in here, and the media lesson was the night of the Kenosha shooting. There was a few reporters on the ground, so it was. Um, Julio Rosas, who was with Town Hall Media, which is basically the same as us, digital media, cell phone guy. Shelby Telcott is with us, Daily Call. She's cell phone girl, Richie cell phone, me cell phone. There's a guy named BG on the scene, cell phone, and then our, 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 our boy Drew Hernandez, cell phone. So the seven reporters that were on the ground are all digital media, A, so we're not connected to the big mainstreamers, none of the TV corporations. We're all on cell phones. So we're, you know, we have no backing. The evidence of cell phones beat the billion-dollar media apparatus that was there to find Rittenhouse guilty no matter what. Because remember, MSNBC, CNN, they didn't give an F, bro. They went all in on this kid. Yeah. You know, and they lost. Um, and Glenn Greenwald got to talk about it. He's like, they basically lost to indep – this is like one of the first trials independent where independent media, media went against corporate yeah. and the cell phones won. Yeah. And so for me, that was a huge lesson because, I, you know, after after a trial like this – you know, media companies blow you up, right? Because they want to interview you. You were there, and obviously, I talked. I talked about the trial and the verdict and all that stuff. But I wanted to make it clear to even them: you guys lost to independent media. Like you guys lost because you 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 care about a narrative and not just showing people yes. what of what what kind of happened. So um, this was key, and I want just you know people to remember that. Like th you know, the only you know, Rittenhouse is free because of the power of what independent media, and we put ourselves in that situation, and that was a trend. Of all the riots, but that kind of just like capped it off of the beautiful battle that we had with corporate media that, that summer, us against them and, and, and them against us. Yeah, I think it's a great point. I think 2020 was, to to buttress that, the inflection point for this yeah. because people, you know, they were remote, they were at home, there's shit going on in the streets, they can go outside and we all have this, you know, camera that's better than they used in the movies 20 years ago on our, on our, at our fingertips. And, you know, part of me says as well that the eventual balancing a little bit that happened with social media in the last four years has also contributed to that. Now, what you're talking about with Rittenhouse is before Elon buys yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
But then Elon buys Twitter, and I'm like, okay, he's moving it to the right. Probably not the worst thing considering the other platforms are left. Now you got Zuckerberg 2.0, Chad Zuck going on, you know, who's like suddenly like red pill Zuck or whatever. So you're seeing some loosening there on, I guess, the Instagram. I don't know about Facebook. I have no idea what goes on there, but like at least on the Instagram side or whatever. And it's like that is – it's helping what you're talking about, but it starts with the fact that the veil got lifted Mm -hmm. in 2020. And then obviously through cases like this where it's like, holy shit, we can't just – it's not as easy to – it's not nearly as easy to just cover shit up or sweep it under the rug as it used to be because there's going to be too many people who have – no matter how much suppressing you do, it's going to get out. We all got phones. We can all text each other. It's going to go. And Twitter, dude, played, I mean, just a massive role in this. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it, it, it was crazy. But, um, but R- Richie, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for him. He's going to put, he's right, he's almost done with the book of everything that happened in 2020 to us and these, these kind of inner stories that I think people are really going to kind of enjoy and not, not kind of know the, the kind of the, just how crazy stuff was. But yeah, Richie played a key, key. Um, testimony and, that, and look that didn't, that impacted him to I mean till this day man of he course. hasn't he hasn't been the same of course. um you know and a bunch of like conservative outlets after that like hit him up and like wanted him to do speaker gigs and he was like he just was like dude people not died and you know, everything's like, content man. yeah yeah not everything like no one like I'm, I I want your view bro but, like no one won people try to make it seem like he was uh like I don't know he was a hero I went to a because I was it was that verdict it was like at the end of the year uh there's that group turning point USA they always have like a end of the year big politic event thing and they have it in phoenix and i and i only went because i got a bunch of friends that went i just wanted to go go see them before like the new year and i and um i went and i didn't know that like the day that i went that they like invited rittenhouse to do like to mm. speak and um yeah. rittenhouse comes into the convention dude and uh, i was joking with a friend about it but like the whole convention just swarmed on. I mean, even like the celebrities and oh, yeah. the conservative influencers. And I like joke with a friend. I'm like, bro, you would have thought like Drake is in here. We got yeah. conservative Drake in here. And then, um, and then I, um, I got, I ended up getting backstage passes. So I was, I ended up being being backstage, and Rinhouse, um, is backstage. He's getting ready to go speak, and I could tell, dude, because no one else was reading. Because I'm just studying him. Because I kind of, I'm like, you know, because I'm, this is like a human moment. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, because this kid's still 17 at this time. And then, um. He's getting ready to to speak to like a crowd of like it was like five thousand people, and then everyone is bothering him, dude. Like people are like, Rittenhouse, can you sign this?" The girls will be on like on Facetime, say hi to my mom, or <laughs> and then like every influencer is like still wants a selfie. And I could tell you that the kid was having a mental breakdown oh, of like, yeah. "This is way too much. I'm about to speak. What what, what am I really being fam-? like?" It was just a lot, and uh, and I could just read it in his mind. Oh, like, this yeah. is not. We all saw him on the stand. Yeah, too. yeah. I mean. It you know, was brutal, dude. He's not, and, and, um, and I'm not saying that to rip him or anything. Like, it's a traumatic thing. It's, it's a thing traumatic thing, dude. So, um, you know, it was just crazy, man, to see it. And you know, I got to be there just, just at least see that. And um, yeah, dude, it's just yeah, that's crazy. You world, had a bro. real baptism of fire. That yeah. was, I mean, it's the best and worst thing that ever happened to you. You see some horrible shit. Oh, sorry, is that fucking cap leaking? My bad, bro. No, yeah, you're I'll, good, bro. I'll get you a new one. But you know, you see, you see the. Best of reporting, yeah. but the worst of humanity in a lot of ways, too. Something – and the sad part is, like, so, some of the stuff is supposed to be rooted in something good, but then it's just hijacked by, like, the dumbest people in the world, which is what happens with mobs. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to live in a country where actual peaceful protests can happen, not to say yeah. that that's exactly what went down here. But, like, protests themselves tend to attract – not the best and brightest. No, at no, least yeah. from at least from someone who can think for themselves in either political direction, you know. And you got to see that in a way. I want to ask you, like, like, will. like during that twenty twenty time, I imagine we all did. But like you, you had friends, right? That would be like, "Hey, Julian, how come you didn't post that black square, man?" Or like, "What team are you on, man?" Or, you know, like I had friends switch up during that era, dude. Like, oh right? yeah, yeah, pe- yeah, yeah, people. Th- there was there was a massive, there guess, was a massive like social psychosis that's that was what, going on what and and what's crazy is that was during i launched this podcast publicly september 15th 2020 from march 13th 2020 until then i was building it 
24-7 around the clock in silence. Wasn't telling anyone about it. No, right, right, none right. of my friends even knew I was launching this thing. You know, doing God knows what, trying to figure out how to get this off the ground and teach myself how to do all this. And so I, it was weird because, of course, I'm following all this stuff on Twitter. I'm very attuned to the news because also that's going to be a part of my part, job right, right. coming up. But I was divorced from it in a way because I was on an island. I was in my parents' house back in the woods building wasn't near this stuff or whatever. And so there, oh, I, I couldn't even that's... appreciate it till later. I remember exactly that moment when the Black Squares things w- was happening. <laughs> we woke up in the morning. My cousin was staying over because we were, we, were, we were recording music in my studio for her for like three days at one point in there. Because it was also like, it was a good thing for me to like be able to learn how to do all this and EQ. And it was like, Oh yeah, everyone's posting Black Square Square for George Floyd or something. I was like, okay, great, <laughs> sent, and then never thought about it again. <laughs> and then it came yeah. up on an early podcast, and I was like, yeah, what the fuck was that? And so many people were like going around and checking if you had a black yes, square. That, and dude. so then I was like, well, we we got to take this thing down. That's <laughs> fucking crazy. Like this is like a witch hunt or whatever. But that I looking back on it, it was like, wow. Even me, who's like divorced from this stuff, it's like boom, yeah, there boom, was boom, no, th- there was zero thought that went into it. It was like, okay, all right, we're just gonna do this. Like, why? What was, what was, like, it's like Jules. What were, you, what, what were you doing there? What was the, what was the logic in doing that? <laughs> and I think it's, it's, it's obviously an indictment on yourself, but it's also an indictment on uh, the surrounding, on our bro. surrounding society. That like, oh, we're gonna make a big fucking difference with a black square. Come on. Do I remember I think like that day just to piss off people? I put like a, a picture of like Conor McGregor punching somebody. I was like, dude, I'm not doing this. And then, um, because I already knew what's up, bro. I'm, like, I'm seeing this in person as a reporter. And then I remember like the first thing I did is I called my little brother back in back in California because I'm like, this dude is like 20. I don't want you know. I, I guarantee you his friends are all mixed in this. And I, I his name is Luis. I call him. I'm like, I'm like Luis. Um, if I see on your social media that you attend any of these protests, I'm gonna fly back to California myself and kill you. <laughs> and uh, and he's, <laughs> he was just like, he's like, dude, I just want to play Xbox. I don't care. I was like, all right, all right, all right. I'll good, take that. I'm good like, for him, yeah. Man. But I'm like, bro, don't get lost in the sauce. Um, and then I lost, dude. I lost like real close friends, like I went to high school with. Um, they like stopped being friends with me over the coverage, and then it was like, like we're talking about friends, where like I invited them to my house. My mom has like, cooked. oh, that stuff. That's so like that's sad. the worst. And then, um, then it's nice that like you know months later, hey man, sorry, sorry. about that. It's no. like, dude, you switched up. Come Fuck on, you. bro. Yeah, you think I'm? The, the, People would be like, Jorge, you you uh you're a white supremacist. You uh sold out, <laughs> and I'm like. Bro, I did a bad job selling out. I'm driving the same Honda Civic, man. I missed my white supremacist check. <laughs> <Where's that? laughs> oh, that's a bad. When they revert to white supremacists or whatever, and they and they call a guy who is objectively not white that, that's my favorite one ever. It's like, oh, oh yeah, he's. I'm real- like, oh, you guys know my name is Jorge, right? <laughs> His name's Jorge. He's a white, white supremacist. supremacist. Dude, that time just broke people. Dude, it sounds like a Dave Chappelle episode. It was, like it a, was, a horror... was it? Clayton Bigsby. Oh, Clayton like, Bigsby. Show us your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.